The Hog's Die is brought to you by TicketClub.com, your one-stop shop for live events nationwide. Whether you're looking for game, theater, or live performance tickets, don't sweat it. TicketClub.com has you covered. So make sure you're going there for all your live entertainment needs, and make sure you're clicking over to them from the banner at the top of thehogsdie.com. Hey there, it's the Hogsty, DC's unofficial leading source for all things Redskins in the NFL, now part of Big Heads Media. Check us out over there at BigHeadsMedia.com or on thehogsty.com as usual. My name's Sean Conti, and boy, I'm ready for some real football. We're just a couple weeks out from the Philly opener, and I am counting the days. We got a jam packed show for you guys tonight with recaps, roster updates, and player analysis. So come on and join me, Jamal Forrest, Steve Thomas, and Alex Zeese. How are you guys doing tonight, and are you ready for the switch to our season schedule? I'm so ready for the season to start. Really, yeah. this this off season's been really, really, really long. It seems like it to it, me, it, at least. It has, and, and judging by what we've seen, I don't know if I'm really ready for the season <laughs> at this point. Well, that's kind of a problem. Yeah, that that could be a problem because yeah. I'm not. Well, yeah. ready or not, this off season has. Is, this, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Football started a couple of weeks ago, but it's feel like it's only like the. the the first week of the preseason was just two days ago. Like it's moving by pretty quickly for me. So we can blink our eyes and we'll be in the regular yeah, season tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and not only that, we're gonna blink our eyes and it's gonna yes. be week six. That's I hate, what always I hate it, but I love it because the football season is amazing, but still, like, take your time. Come on. Let me enjoy this. That's all I need. Yeah. I'm kinda I'm kinda ready to, to start in the game, you know, in the game previews and stuff though, to be honest with you, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, sure. yeah no more meaningless yeah. jibber jabber about you know trying to stretch out a preseason game to an hour every every exactly. week. Exactly. Yeah. Not that we would be yeah. doing that in this show, of course. No, we're jam no, no. Back, what Sean said. Speaking of jibber jabber, I want to talk about a little incident I saw with a parent taking their kid into an ice cream shop this morning or yesterday. That was. Uh, that, that, it's the preseason, folks. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so Sounds I'm hanging out around an ice cream shop in Dupont Circle. This mom walks in with her four year old or five year old. And she tells the five-year-old as they're going in, I've been wanting to check out this ice cream shop, but you're not getting anything. Oh, no. Who does that to a kid? What kind of satanic witch does that? Right? (laughs) Ouch. That's brutal. So so it's like, like, son, we're just going to go look at the ice cream? Right. Well, daughter. I've never heard of anybody window shopping at at an ice cream cream shop. (laughs) Here's how it goes. Go in ice cream shop. Get kid a ton of ice cream. Let them go nuts for like an hour, and then they crash, and you can, you know, this must, this not have to must deal have been with the like kid. On a diet or something, where she just wanted to, she that the parent just wanted to, you know, have a, a mental picture of what it would be like if she ate the ice cream. <laughs> right, it <laughs> angered me, it. and it angered me as a man who loves ice cream. Yeah. Because what is there old to check out in an ice cream shop for one for one thing? Well, I mean, you flavors, know, it's ice but cream. that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's because her parents did it to her, so she's right. just passing just it on. Just pre- pre- preparing that family. daughter for a lifetime of being disappointed by her parents. I, yeah. <laughs> I bet you she was an Eagles fan because, you know, Eagles fans are that dumb. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so Eagles. It does. It, it does sounds very, so very Eagles fanish. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, we will get to the – let me ask you guys because we'll – we got – what did I say? Two weeks left? To, uh, 22 days something or something like, like that? So that's like yeah. three weeks left. The eighth. The when is game. the eighth? 20? 21? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So, temperature check on confidence going into this season now. Two preseason games under the belt. Scale of 1 to 10. 10 super confident, 1 not confident in all. Based on everything you've seen in the offseason and the two first preseason games. How are you guys I'm at a 4. Yeah, 2. Out of four. Um, two you say out of four. 10, right? Um, you yep, know, out of 10. To be honest with you, I, I, give, it, I, give, it a, I give it a 5 or 6. Um, if, if, if I okay. think one of the things that we, a lot of us – Rightly so, or, or kind of uh, down on as the offense, but I, I don't think it'll be as bad as. Uh, I, that's why I'm giving it fifty fifty, but I don't think it'll be as bad yeah. as, we, as we imagine in our head. So the defense will give us a chance, and we'll probably be in it for a good little minute. So, 
I actually kind of agree with you on the offense, maybe. But the special teams, we'll get to special teams. Yeah. It's, it's been so god-awful terrible that that kind of lowers my rating, my confidence rating just a little bit. Because if they've been this bad in the preseason, just wait until we get, you know, some elite, re- you know, returners headed our way. It's all fa- – it's a fair point, um, you know, that we probably – Shouldn't be thinking about it in terms of, well, are we just talking about how this season's going to go or are we talking about the long term plan? Because uh, to I'm me, this, this season is about, this about the long term plan. I don't care really what the you know win loss record is this year. We're not going to the Super Bowl. We know that. Jay Gruden cares about the win loss record. I know record. Jay does, but you know, you got, we, I think as fans, we got to look at this as a building season. You know, this isn't the championship season. Uh, we have been saying that though since we started this. Yeah, show. I mean, you got to <laughs> admit it's been a building era. But we haven't had a rookie since. quarterback since we started this show. Yeah, we started this what two like two years into Griffin or something it, like that. So it, it was, was the nine and seven the year we started was this. Yeah, it was two thousand fifteen. So. Yeah. yeah, it was fourteen. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, uh, here's my un- unconventional opinion. Okay. <laughs> And most people aren't going to agree with this, and that's fine. I kind of think that in, in absence of a true collapse this year, like 4-12 and 12 level collapse, I think it would probably be better for the organization as a whole to extend Jay. I know it's Jay mediocre Gruden. I get that. And, you know, I know I don't have a love affair with him like Alex does and all of that. But for the sake of Dwayne Haskins' development, keeping him in the same offense – that would mean keeping Jay around. And so I think probably, unless things just really go awful, I think that's probably the best move for the franchise long term. Because what happens when these these quarterbacks change off, these rookie quarterbacks change offenses over and over and over Typically again? Typically, it kills them, yeah. Right. Yeah, do you think it'll kill him, though, without significant playing time this year? As we're kind of surmising he's not going to get maybe that much playing time this year. Is it really that bad to pull the rug out? I mean, well, learning a new the, offense again? Here's the thing that's important because – and your question, Sean, and your question I think what's important is, uh, and we're going to actually be talking about Cole McCoy, um, it may not be a, a long of a wait as people would imagine. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing you're seeing a guy with Cole McCoy who's still dealing with the, the rehab and recovering of his, his, le- his leg injury, so it really kind of leaves <laughs> Case Keenum and, and Dwayne Haskins um, as, the, as the two yeah, primary quarterbacks. True. With that being said, if – uh, Case Keenum is kind of you know underwhelming or just like not moving the needle at all, and you're not you're not necessarily around 500 or even winning. Then he may come in sooner than you think, and he may not even or he may not even wait that long. Period. Just off the the strength of him being a, a better uh, option for the offense. So um, yeah, with that, I was just saying that to say the fact that this this team uh, may see Haskins sooner than sooner than later. Yeah. Here's what I think, <laughs> and, and, and Jamal, I think you have a good point. You know, because I, I mean, if you just look at the first quarter, we all know we've got Eagles, Cowboys, Bears, Giants, Patriots. Right. It's a bad um, five games. Yeah, I mean, if they really kind of sink and end up one and four, you know, in that two and three, and then if you get to the bye week, is November 10th, which is week nine, I believe. Right. Let me Smack see. Dab one, in the two, well, three, I think four, it's, five, six, seven, we're eight. Pretty much in no, the okay. The bye week is after the ninth game. And so if, if the Redskins are out of it by then, you know, and they've got two weeks to prepare for the Jets, which is the next game. Right. I mean, if they're hopelessly out of it, you might as well put Haskins in for the rest of the year. Sure. Better come, come hell or high water. So, I, I, Jamal, I mean, in, in response to your point, I'd say if we're going to see him, it's probably going to be that week, the November 17th. People said that or versus the Dolphins a few weeks earlier were the two popular times that people thought he'd go in. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I think if you're looking at it in terms of it's all about developing Haskins, you have a point that keeping continuity in the coaching staff is going to be important. But let's also not discount the fact that this team has not done a good job of recruiting coaches. Period. In the last ten years, ever since, or maybe not ten, since we lost Mike Shanahan, uh, we have struggled to get good reason. coordinators in. Uh, People have flat out told this team before they don't want to coach here rather than even come in for job interviews. I mean, we saw that with uh, guys like Steve Spagnuolo way back when. You know, a couple other people have done it in the past where they said, oh, they're interested in this person. That person's not interested. So let's not assume that you get rid of Jay, you're going to get anybody much better. Right. 
that's the other piece of it, the hidden piece of it, is who, who exactly can you install that's going to turn this team around? We've tried it how many times in the last 10 years? Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be hard. Um, and I think what Alex is saying is true. It's, it's, it's hard to necessarily see that you can <clears> – <throat> and this is from a fan's perspective. One of the things that a lot of people do, you see on social media, is <laughs> – um, you see this hot coach or big name is available, and you automatically think that, hey, the Redskins should look into these guys. All right, well, what makes you think that they aren't doing that? Um, just because they sign somewhere else or um, they commit somewhere else, uh, that you got to look into a deeper nature of things. Like, and, and and this is what we start to do as fans. We're we're starting to get aware that sometimes, to Alex's point, um, it's kind of hard to be in Washington knowing who you're going to be working for. And it's not on the coaching level; it's on the front office level, higher ups. Um, you you kind of have that reputation uh, amongst NFL circles, front office circles, and just NFL circles in general <clears throat> that it may not be one of the best places to work, um, and that's going to be hard. But at the same time, if you have somebody who can kind of right the ship and make it a little bit steady and make it a little bit more respectable, eventually you'll have that uh, Jason Garrett year where he breaks out of that seven and nine shell. Eight and eight shell, and he starts going eleven and five, twelve and four, thirteen and three, um, and you can get that with Jay Gruden. Um, the, the the question is, well, I'm excuse, I'm sorry. The the hope is to get that with Jay Gruden. I can't say you can because it hasn't happened yet, but the hope is to get that with Jay Gruden, and eventually stability mm-hmm. provides um, a more respectable organization. That's just not where they are just now. Yeah, I, I think. I think the reputation of Dan Snyder in the league is real, and I think the reputation of the Redskins front office sort of generally is real. Oh, no question about that. <laughs> you know, and um, I don't think you're going to get, you know, if Bill Belichick leaves, you know, the Patriots for whatever reason, he ain't coming to Washington, you know. No. I think the Redskins would have to dip down into, like, the college ranks probably. You and know, even like then, the hot, the hot, they're not going to get Urban Meyer or one of those. Well, Urban names. Meyer isn't going anywhere anyway. I mean, it'd have to be some hot name, you know. The Urban Meyer and, and what's the, the guy at Clemson? I mean, those those guys aren't no. aren't leaving, right? Dabo, yeah, thank you, Shaw, Dabo. Yeah, none of those guys would they'd be out of their mind to come here. It, well, I mean, and they're making almost as much money as they would. And but yeah. it, but point is, I think you'd either have to look at that or some like up and coming core uh, NFL coordinator. That's who you'd be looking at. And who knows? But to to me, I'd almost rather have another couple years of mediocre if it means Haskins develops properly. Sure. You know, that's kind of my that was where I was going with it. Uh, and I agree with you there. Uh, and I think that you have a staff here that can develop a quarterback. Hopefully, the the better you know. the better thing is though. Um, after two weeks alone, you see that you may not have to wait a long time to see the growth in Haskins. For example, um, and it's the easiest thing to point out, but for example, uh, you look at how he's handling the blitz protections uh, from week to week. Um, the first week, it was pretty, uh, it, it was showed that he struggled a bit. Um, he had some places where the offensive linemen were confused and it, it trickled down to the running back end. He had some pressure on him immediately and kind of costed them a good field position or, excuse me, um, good mm-hmm. down and distances um, and, and got some, some unnecessary sacks and some avoidable sacks. And then the next week, um, he's able to recognize where the blitzing, the blitzing defenders are coming from. Um, and, and one of those plays resulted in a, a 50-something yard touchdown to uh, Robert Davis. Uh, he's also recognizing how to get the ball out quicker uh, in terms of his reads with the tight ends and the flats and the jet outs and things like that. Um, and it's, it shows to his growth from week to week. So far, it's only been two weeks. However, um, if you can see that in week three and you can see that in week four, it kind of tells you that um, his development is a little bit quicker than we expected as well. No. I, listen, he's a smart guy, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, not though. I mean, I'm agreeing with you, Jamal. I mean, he's a smart guy, and I don't know if people really understand this. Yeah, there, there's, there, there's an. He did an interview with. Uh, oh God, I can't remember. Uh, one of those ESPN interviews. I don't think it was Gruden, well, but during the draft the prep. Um, yeah, the film. I was like, "Holy moly, this guy yeah, is yeah. from a football he, perspective. That. This guy's a genius. This guy's a genius when it comes to football." Uh, you know, and and um, I, I mean, it's a pretty big st- leap from Ohio State's offense and their play calling, mm-hmm. which is basically none, to Jay Gruden's, which is complicated even for an NFL offense. So I think, if nothing else, that's kind of the holdup. Um, but he's smart and he's going to get it. And I do agree, Jamal. I thought in, in the first game against the Browns, you know, I think some of those sacks were on Haskins because it looked to me, and I'm no expert at this, but it looked to me like the offensive linemen were not keyed on the right guy, which is what left some of those defensive linemen totally unblocked, and that's on Haskins. And it did get better. 
it did get better against the Bengals. And so I think he did make progress. Um, he, so, he made progress and, in some areas, uh, clearly. Yeah, he, he did. Still, he still, from what I can tell, and, you know, we're obviously not in the huddle, but it still seems to me that he's, r- he's really slow. not getting yeah. very far off his first read a lot of these plays. Uh, like, you don't see him getting these check down passes that have been a staple of Jay's offense under Kirk and Alex Smith. You know, he. I just think it's the game's a little bit fast for him still. I, I think, think it's going to so take too. a little bit of time. I think that's the game. I think that that it's also though playing in a college system where it's basically your here's your read. It's this guy. Just hit him when he's open. You know, like that. That's kind of what you do in Ohio State. You don't. You're not going one, two, three, four. You're you're you know waiting for that first well, guy to no. just. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Because he did make reads at Ohio State. This is not one read and go. And that's one of the things I liked about him is he did, he was able to progress through reads at Ohio State. It's just a different level. You know, the NFL, we always hear players say the NFL game is a lot faster. It, it is. You yeah, know, and sure. I think it's not so much that he can't redo, progress through the reads because he did it in college. It's just he needs to get used to it at an NFL level combined with the play calling, you know, and just better players. I just think it's going to take him a little bit of time to get up to speed. But his arm is special, man. Oh, yeah. And I mean, God, you see special. it on that deep ball that he threw. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful. It's, yeah. he's got a beautiful deep ball. A, I think he is a much more – vertical friendly quarterback than what we're used to and they're gonna have to change a lot of kind of what gruden likes to do to fit haskins playing i think style. it is what gruden likes to do though when when we had oh yeah yeah the, no don't get me wrong gruden loves to throw, call deep ball, but he hasn't yeah. in five years because he hasn't had that quarterback well i mean we had deshaun jackson and he called it with kirk and kirk missed it on a routine basis sure. You know, Kirk would it just couldn't do it. Couldn't Kirk just didn't have a good deep ball, in my opinion. So I th- actually think if Jay has a quarterback that can do it, and he's got Terry McLaurin or pick your poison, you know, one of these guys kind of develops into it. I actually think Jay's going to call it because Jay has a history of it. Jay did call it with Robert Griffin, you Briefly. know, tried. Briefly, yeah, and he did call it with Kirk Cousins and Deshaun Jackson. So I think he will call it. It's just a matter of getting those guys on the same page and up to speed. It yeah. And I level. think you're right, but I, I think there's also an adjustment period for a coach to learn what his quarterback strengths are going to be. And yeah, oh, sure. you look at what Haskins was able to do well in this last game. It's the deep ball, and it's also the play-action rollout and kind of just having that tight end – or somebody kind of sitting in a you know five ten yards deep, for for him to just pitch it to. Th- those were his strengths, you know. I have, yeah, and I do think that we saw some experimentation in this last game um, with Haskins. I don't think we're necessarily seeing the bread and butter plays in the preseason. I think we're seeing some feeling out going on. So that just speaks to your point. Sorry. Oh no, because um, you actually you brought up a, a good point too. That's that's actually really good. Um, I think that that may that may be the case with them. Um, they, like, so I forgot who, who had mentioned it. One of you all mentioned it, uh, probably a few minutes ago. We were talking about a bunch of things, but, um, we had mentioned the fact that Jay Gruden has, uh, put a lot on his plate so far as a rookie. Um, and that's a, that's mm-hmm. an extreme challenge for a rookie, but, uh, you wouldn't do that to a guy that you is, is pretty much know is capable of handling or something like that. Um, sure. and with that being said to your point, Sean, that, uh, yes, he's probably doing a lot where he wants to see how Haskins reacts uh, to different play calls and how he how he understands the defense and how he understands the coverages or uh, the form the, the lineups that the defense is playing against the call that Jay Gruden makes and just to see how he how he naturally reacts because this is the opportunity to show that in preseason and, and learn from things. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I, I just I, I have a bone to pick and I don't want to get too far off topic because I know we, we have other things to talk about, but I, I just don't understand. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird how Giants fans are going out of their way <laughs> to talk trash about Dwayne Haskins, knowing that they love that man so much prior to um, the preseason starting. Um, they're doing everything mm-hmm. that they can to bash Dwayne Haskins, who virtually hasn't done anything to him. Um, but because Dan- uh, Daniel Jones went five for five <laughs> in his first game, all of a sudden the narrative changes that that's the guy that they really want. Um, I, I kind of feel I kind of feel bad for Giants fans. They sound pretty miserable the way that they're going out their way to 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 bash a guy who hasn't done anything to him. Um, but that just makes me root for Haskins more because this is completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, first of all, 
screw Giants fans, okay? And I'm lumping Grant Paulson in as one because he's the one tweeting about how he's rooting for Daniel Jones. So screw Giants fans and screw Grant Paulson yeah. too. Um, I think it's kind of funny, Jamal, me, because – by the way, for everybody that's listening. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, it's not the opinion of the hog side generally, but, you know, screw, screw Grant Paulson. Don't root for Daniel Jones. But, you know, it's funny that – they go through all these gyrations because I've seen it too, knowing that Daniel Jones isn't going to even start the season. We know this. No. You know, it's it, Eli Manning is a starter this year. Right. So I think it's kind of funny. And, and anybody who's judging a quarterback on one game in the well, preseason, like now, one. But yeah. Yeah, but I mean, come on. I mean, they haven't even played even a full half. Right. You know, I guess, you know, or even a full game combined. And you're going to make judgments? That's just the height of idiocy. Yeah, yeah. It really and truly is. And, and so, although I mean, look, and, and, Haskins now has played a full game, he's played four quarters. <laughs> Okay, uh, but still, I mean, it's a preseason, right. you know, it's not stars, all those things. But I, I want to go back to what Jamal said. Um, I think it's a good point. I don't think Jay – Jay is, has thrown a lot on, at him, but it's because he is confident in him. Sure. If this was like Jim Druckenmiller, you know, or somebody <laughs> to pull a name out of thin yeah, air was, from the past. A good, good pull. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, we wouldn't be going through this. No. You know, we'd hear a totally different tone out of Jay. Um, so I, it's just going to take time. I think if you are if you want Dwayne to start the season uh, at QB1, I think that's a huge mistake. You know, you do, do not want to have him, if nothing else, you do not want to have him face in consecutive order Fletcher Cox, Demarcus Lawrence, and Khalil Mack with a subpar left tackle. No. That all by itself ought to tell you that he should not be starting week one. No, that's a bad plan. And I think, you know, even though he has improved from game one to game two of the preseason, and you can definitely see there's things to build off of. Like I could des- I I as like just a layman fan could probably design half an offense that Dwayne could run with what we've seen him do effectively. So I'm sure Jay's got a plan. Of course he does. Uh, but you don't necessarily want to go with that as your plan A to be like, yeah. All right, here's four things Dwayne can do well, and we're just going to run on that. Well, and then we've got, you know, the Patriots week five, yeah. and that's probably going to be a slaughter, you know, against Tom Terrific and all that. So I, I just Our I defense think. defense could put up a fight. Uh, yeah, play. okay. I mean, this is a seven-time Super Bowl team we're talking about here. I, I, I just, not? you know, why do that to the guy? Right. So I, I'm happy to just see him make progress. I am excited to see him this week. We'll get to a real short game preview, I guess, at the end of this thing. Um, but I'm excited to see him against the Falcons yeah, for sure, to see him play a little bit more. That'll be a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, Should we switch switch tracks to the Bengals game? or actually got another? No, comment? no, no. I mean, I think um, we are kind of on the Bengals game, aren't we? Well, let me go, let me run through a couple of real real quick notes if we're gonna do that real fast right. from the Bengals. Um, just a bunch of random things. I, you know, I, I've seen a lot of poor tackling out of the Redskins. These guys are not wrapping up. Like DRC has a habit of not wrapping up. I've seen this multiple times from him. He's one of these guys that tries to hit, get a big hit, drives the shoulder in, and because he doesn't wrap up with his arms, the guy. That's been away. his mo his whole career, though. Yeah, right. And so that's that. We, we've seen a bunch of um, dropped interceptions. Thank God Monte Nicholson got the one, you know, against, uh, you know, this week. Against the yeah, great but, job by Payne um, to tip that ball up in the air. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Deron Payne was a freaking beast in that mm-hmm. game. Um, uh, AP obviously looked great, you know, in early action. You know, great. Brian Quick drop. You know, we'll get to special teams. What a disaster. Yeah. Um, Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else do I have? Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson has clearly, I don't know if, if Alex or Jamal, you noticed him in, pre, in training camp, but he's done something to catch uh, Jay's attention because he's an undrafted free agent rookie, and he seems to be the principal punt returner now, and he had one good one. Yeah. You well, know, thank God. I, I didn't notice anything from him in training camp, no. Um, 30, okay. 31, I mean, but he's right? had, uh, did you, Jamal? 31. Um, that's his. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Um. I, yeah, I haven't seen much to be honest with you, Sean. Uh, Sean um, what's his name again? I'm sorry. Yeah, 31. Wilson. Yeah, Sean, Sean Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. I haven't seen a lot out of him. It was really the other. I, I wish I had my my roster in front of me, but it it was the other running back who he's not on. He's not on special teams. I don't believe, but um, I seen a lot of him. They used him a lot. Uh, but I don't have my roster in front of me, so I can't really tell you. But as far as Sean Wilson, mm. I hadn't seen much of him uh, during camp. Um, okay. But you know he did look good. I give him that much. Uh, he was he looked pretty he, he looked pretty fast. 
Um, but that's all I can really that's pretty much say about him. Yeah. I, I just point out that, you know, Sean Wilson seems to be getting the majority of the first team punt, you know, punt returns. You know, he has for two games in a row now. So we can keep he it. Got hurt, yeah, though, he right? got hurt. Didn't he get hurt in this game? He did get hurt. I, I don't um, know what the update we is. We haven't heard any, any announcement. I, mean, yeah. I don't think there's really been a big update. Other couple notes I thought I saw. Um, uh, Eric Flowers looked light years better. I thought at left guard against the Bengals and he against the Browns. Jaron Christian didn't look very good. I didn't think Tony Bergson looked bad. But I think it's, Eric Flowers is worth a discussion. You know, the, my unpopular opinion is going to be um, I think he's getting better at left guard. Mm. You know, I can't speak to Wes Martin really particularly. I didn't focus on him, but – uh, you know the bar he's improving. That is right up. It's just on the floor. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that's kind of go saying he got better. <laughs> if he didn't piss his pants, he didn't do any worse. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, see, honestly, right, see, no, that's fair. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I think a lot of people out there. I'm not talking about you guys in particular, but I, I mean, I think a lot of people are bashing Eric Flowers. Certainly, it was deserved against the Browns, but I think that's become sort of the accepted narrative. You know, a little bit, and people really aren't watching. I think he was actually good in the run game, Steve. Uh, I'll say that. But in the past game, I saw one play where he got pushed back about 15 feet. I'm not saying the dude is going to be in the Pro Bowl, but I also saw some good stuff in the in past Pro too. (laughs) Go ahead, Jamal. I was just going to say that um, I was actually one of those people, and and to this day, August the 18th, 2019, I still think he's the worst worst offensive lineman in in, in football. Um, But with that being said, I am not. (laughs) I also stated in the past, and it's documented that I said that I, I do I do give him a chance um, at a new position. Um, I just don't think that he's any good. Um, but as as time goes on, you know, we'll see what he can do under Bill Callahan's tutelage. But I just do not I do not believe he he'll be as consistent as we need somebody to be at that left guard position. The good thing is he's young, he is strong. Um, and that goes well for a guy that you can use at that to, to in terms like improving your run game and stuff like that. But uh, that's about it. I mean, fair enough. I, I just mean I think, you know, the awful that we definitely saw at left tackle, you know, from him. Uh, and last year he was awful with the Giants. I think he's gotten a little bit better since week one. That's all I'm saying. And, and I don't, don't know if he's going to be worth starting. In uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, right. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, if Wes Martin's not ready yet, maybe he's, is, maybe he isn't. Is Eric Flowers the worst thing in the world at left guard? Well, maybe he is, but I don't think it's as bad as you think. I don't think it's as bad as people think. That's all. Thing, I do not think it's as well, bad. Maybe. Maybe. One thing that'll be very important awesome for this offense um, moving forward is just like the quarterback position, but it's, it's week three of the preseason, which is coming up this, this week against the Atlanta Falcons. Um, just making sure that this offensive line that they put out there is the projected offensive line um, for the season. Yeah, so that's all. Um, but that's the notes I had from the guy. I don't want to spend too much time on the Bengals, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, I did notice that uh, Jay tried to jet sweep to Steven Sims, you know, because, uh, you know, Sims, it, the, the play got absolutely clobbered because the mm-hmm. uh, offensive line didn't block it right. But um, – I just I pointed I wrote this down because this is the type of thing that Steven Sims, who was my wide receiver sleeper, if you guys recall from a few weeks ago, right. this is the perfect type of thing that Sims can be good at because this dude is explosive, and if they can get him to do this kind of thing on a regular basis, uh, I think he has a shot at making an impact. So you know, Baron, just keep an eye out for him. You know, he may be a decent practice squad candidate. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Steve, you're selling us short on the bangle stuff. We have so many things to talk about. Okay. We have those terrible, awful referee calls. Yeah. Uh, oh, Calvin God. Harmon getting but the Hold on. Which two. one do you mean? Because there were like eight. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. There were so many bad ones. But that was one thing, certainly, okay. we got to talk about. Okay. The so the Kelvin Harmon thing, I'd like to point out that there is a, a Twitter account called NFL, at NFL Officiating, that is, it's checkmarked. So I'm it's assuming it's, account. It's, yeah. it's accurately stating that it's the yeah. Refer- yeah. NFL yeah. referee's official account. They put out this absolute garbage of an explanation for the for the Kelvin Harmon call. Um, pass okay, so the first yeah, one, the pass interference way. call. Let's be the clear, first one because they right. held multiple pass interferences against him, yeah. <laughs> and both were so in. the first one. Yeah. The first one they said that Harmon pushed off of the the Cincy DB. Right. 
where the camera, the TV camera, did not catch it. But they had the All-22 film and claimed to show that uh, Harmon pushed off. And number one, the flag was thrown, not at that point, the flag was thrown at the point of the impact. Sure. So I don't think the referee even noticed that, number one. And number two, if you really watch that video closely and zoom in on it, the DB pushed off first. Right. Okay? It, it's it's so if anything, it was defensive and, and pass interference. they're slapping each yeah. other's hands the whole way. Yeah, if, if, if it's anything, it was defensive pass interference, but I truly think it wasn't anything on anybody. They were just playing football. That was, that was, might have been, I don't want to be too hyperbolic, but that was an absolutely atrocious call right. in every way. You know, and, and the idea that the NFL officiating tweeted out an explanation to try and defend themselves is pathetic. Yeah, well, you know. It was a pretty weak explanation. It was. Yeah, I mean, it just, they didn't say anything. Yeah, really. they didn't. And that's one of the things that uh, concerns me moving forward. Uh, the officiating was a huge problem on on uh, Thursday night for the Redskins game. And I actually saw some some clips through other uh, throughout other games where uh, people put together bogus penalties that the refs called um, in mm-hmm. other games. And I've seen some today. Today's Sunday, by the way, the, the Seahawks and Vikings have been playing, and earlier the Saints and Chargers uh, played as well. And it's kind of nice. it's kind of concerning because when you get into the season, you have to uh, deal with the officiating. Um, yeah. And, and, <laughs> I like that yeah, side that Jamal it, had. Just, in his. <laughs> you, but so you think about it, and you realize that you're going to have to deal with the officiating for 16 weeks in the reg- 17 weeks, excuse me, in the regular season. Uh, and then it'll come down to crunch time in the playoffs as well. Like how how crazy are they going to call these? Like how how loose are going are they going to be with these calls, or how strict are they going to be? And that'll definitely get in the way of people playing natural and good football. Um, if that makes sense, like you just know how to play the game, and if you stay within right. the the safety of it all, like it's like how petty can these reps be just off the strength of? trying to stick to these new rules that they had. Like, this blindside block well, thing was incredibly, incredibly stupid. Somebody just came up and chipped the guy. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I can't remember which game blind it was. Side block. Yeah. But he just came up and chipped the guy, and they called they called the blindside block on him. And I'm like, how I think it was a Raven. That might have been the Ravens game, yeah, I, can't, I think. I don't remember which one it was, but if that was the case, then, yeah, it's just like, like how can you really – how like – I'm not a loss of words, as you can tell. I, I'll just leave it at that. Well, the other one, the other one, Jamal, was the the Josh Norman call, the spearing call. Yeah, you know, helmet yeah. contact. Oh, if you, yeah, he was. If you watch the ball, that, and the the offensive player actually initiated contact <laughs> himself. It should have been, if anything, again on Cincinnati, right. not on Josh Norman. He was going clearly going for the ball. He did not initiate contact. The other player initiated contact. Just the worst call ever. And by the way, if you guys caught this. Uh, the head official was Stephen Hockley, right? Ed Hockley's son, you yeah. know. Yeah, so Who, nepotism by the way, they at its worst. They made him a head coach the sa- like two days after his father retired, which was head coach. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, head, head ref. <laughs> well, if there's any one celebrity, yeah. have I told my Ed Hockley story on the air yet? I don't think I you don't guys know, remember. I don't know. Okay, so I went to a seminar. This is years ago, maybe eight, seven, eight, nine years ago. Uh, in Las Vegas, and Ed Hockley, who is an attorney, was one of the speakers at this seminar, <laughs> and he was the most arrogant person you could possibly imagine. It, his okay. entire speech was uh, one like story after another about you know. So I was sitting there talking to John Elway, you know. It was like one of those things at one after. It wasn't anything to do with the law. It wasn't anything like applying, you know, something about you know right. having two career, having a law career, and being an NFL. Ref. It was just him telling stories about him talking to and hanging out with famous NFL players, you know, I, I, it was By just, way, and so that's, I have a negative opinion of Ed Hockley only from that well, from years well, ago. Can we also just briefly talk, maybe referees shouldn't be hanging out with NFL players. Well, he wasn't even yeah, talking about like in the club. He was talking about like on the I, field before the okay, game, fair and, enough. you know, even yeah. then you're, you're, well, Alex, you're judging he wasn't game, really, he wasn't really hanging out with him. This is the point. Yeah. He's an official, you know. This is like, sound like this is like the groupies claiming to know the rock star. Gotcha. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's not you Steve. Know. Some of the groupies do know the rock star. If you know. <laughs> okay. Well, not in that way. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe Hockley did know John right. Elway in that way. We don't know. Possibly. The twenty first century. Possibly. Things happen. It was the twentieth century, but yeah, it was the twentieth century yeah, when Elway was playing. But Steve, like that's kind of a. Um, 
I'll leave it. I, I, I'm not going to describe the type of person he is. I'll leave it. I'll leave it at what you said. <laughs> but yeah, well, I, I none, none of that surprises me. I kind of get your frustrations. Those, those are some annoying people. I, I'll give you that much. Yeah, exactly. I just don't appreciate that. And I've always had a negative impact. And then, you know, he's kind of the only, the referee celebrity. You know, oh, he's, he's the only he's one everybody knows. Been the and, number one, right? But he's had his share of awful, horrible calls. Mm-hmm. You know, and his son, I think, is just not qualified to be an NFL official. He, he doesn't a head official at least. Me. Uh, I mean, maybe no. he, you know, could get there. But yeah, it seems to me like he piggybacked off his father a little I bit. Wonder if- and. But but the subs the subs in the part what Jamal was saying is the worst part. This blindside block thing oh, has got to go. I didn't see that it's just one terrible. exactly. But, That's terrible. Um, yeah. I mean, there were at least five calls that were highly questionable in the Redskins game. Oh, yeah. First, yeah. the Norman call. Then the non-pass interference call on that one touchdown that Cincy scored. Uh, two questionable ones against uh, Harmon. And then, uh, what was it? The pick play they tried to call? Or they called yeah, on the Redskins at one point? Where, uh, yeah, Stevenson. The pick play, the yeah. Sideline. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw that one on the replay. That The guy trips over his own feet. He's not. It's not a pick play. The guy just fell. Yeah. True. Well, look, the Redskins are like three out of the last four years, something like the most penalized team in the NFL. So it just looks like it's We're usually up there, yeah. I wonder if Hockley uh, only did that just so he can get his, his, his face in <laughs> and new a name out there. Yeah. Um, Cause I I, I I lied to you not before this I didn't even know Sean was a part or I think Sean Hockey Lee, I forgot his name but Steve Steve Steven, Hockey it was Lee, Stephen I, Hockey. I didn't even know yeah. he was a head ref. You had a fifty fifty shot based on the names of the guys on the show. Yeah, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't either, Jamal. I didn't know until last yeah, Thursday that so he was I even think, a even a referee. Get his name out there. These stupid calls. Oh. I think well, so. Well, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I'm not a huge Ed Hockley fan, but he did one thing that was really popular early on. That's he, how he used to actually explain what they saw and why they called things in, in his answers. Until his answers became idiotic. Right, right. Well, <laughs> it, it became kind of a joke in itself. Yeah. But his son yeah, did the opposite. His son gave no logical explanation. It was just like, <laughs> we threw a flag, it's a thing. <laughs> no, nah, it's... Fifteen of penalty. Happened. Okay, yeah. so penalties. Last year, this was heading into week seventeen because I'm, go- I'm I'm going back to our week seventeen game preview here, and so I'll have to look it up for the. I, I don't know what happened in this last game, but uh, going into the seventeenth game, meaning after the fifteenth game, the Redskins were ranked 29th in the NFL, and were had 113 penalties. That was for the. Holy moly! Yeah. So there you go. A lot of holding. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to ask you guys, too, actually, um, speaking about the Bengals, or actually not just the Bengals game, but receiving so far through the first two games of the preseason, Robert Davis, um, Harmon that we talked about, are any of these guys shaking up your expectations for rosters in terms of receivers this year? I mean, Jamal, you're the one that wrote uh, about David, Davis, you're the one that wrote about Davis. Yeah. I mean, what do so you think? For me, I kind of think that's an important question, um, Sean, because – when you look at what Robert Davis has been doing, regardless of how he scored his first touchdown, he was he was he was wide open. Uh, that's a blown coverage. However, you're the one getting in the end zone. You're the one putting up points for this offense. You are producing. Um, and when you're constantly mm-hmm. putting your name out there in a positive light, and you're showing coaches that you have the capabilities of why they drafted you, he got past the defense on multiple occasions, even the first game. Um, where he drew a he drew a pass interference. He didn't necessarily catch the ball, but he got beyond the defense. Um, and then the second game, where he gets behind the defense and he scores a touchdown, you kind of see what they drafted him for. Right. Um, and when you put that pressure on the coaches and you put that pressure yeah. on your the people at that position group, um, you kind of shake the tables a bit, um, and you kind of force the coach's hand because if you keep producing like that, um, you can shake up the roster. And have some unexpected cuts, I believe. the The question is, at that point, are the coaches and is the head coach willing to pull the trigger on what needs to be done? And there's no telling where Terry McLaurin is just yet. So far, he's he has been the highlight of training camp. Um, and if he's able to uh, produce in preseason, if he ever gets on the field. Um, if he's able to produce in preseason, does that mean Josh Dawson is safe? Um, you can move on from Brian Quick as well. You can move on. 
you could move on, excuse me, from Jehu Chesson. Um, you never know. Like, there's multiple, uh, there's variables in play when you look at these guys. And uh, truth be told, mm-hmm. uh, it all depends on how Robert Davis keeps producing and how Terry McLaurin looks because you can't shake up this roster just a bit at that position. Um, and that's, that's going to be key moving forward, I think. Get rid of Doxon, man. Get rid of, get rid of. Yeah. Well, Go ahead. I, I think McLaurin, uh, he's safe. He's going to be on the roster. He's a third-round pick. You know, th- there's no way they'll cut no. him yeah, after training should. camp I, I was saying, no, I was saying, or after preseason. Um, you know, so should, if he ever gets on the field, can he can he show that can he show that Josh Doxson, um does he does he deserve does he deserve a roster spot or or does or the other the other three that I named? Yeah. Saying, oh, like, I got you. Okay, I, McClure, I got what you're saying. I'm, I'm saying. I, I'm kind of confused, to be honest with you. I, I mean, is the, Terry McLaurin not being on the field these past two weeks is kind of like yeah. what's in the middle of the black hole, you know, yeah. like nobody Weird. knows because, you know, he's not really injured. And Well, I mean, I thought I saw something on Twitter that he might have an uh, injury that bugged him. Yeah, but I kind of think, to, play, to be honest with you, like, why, why are you holding that out? I, I kind of, yeah. to be honest with you, I think Jay is sandbagging this guy. I think he's been so good that he doesn't really want to show the rest of the NFL how good the guy is. I, I think that that but might be some of that too. Keep a keep a hidden card thing. in the deck. So Paul Richardson is a lock. Trey Quinn is a lock. And Terry McLaurin right. is a lock. Those three guys are going to be on the roster no matter what for sure. And so right. really and truly, you've got sure. two maybe three spots in left on the active roster if they keep six, which they may or may not. So you've got Jehu Chesson, Robert Davis, Josh Oxen, Kelvin Harmon, Darvin Kidsey, who's looked good, Brian Quick, Cam Sims, and Steven Sims. That's eight eight players competing right. for two, maybe three tops. And so I'm going to say okay, three. Okay, let's go with three. You know, mm-hmm. And so uh, th- yeah. they're going to have to cut some guys who have shown some stuff, who's, who've done good things. Sure. They are. There's just no getting around it. Darvin Kidsey right. has separated, I think. He, he's played a lot. He's made good catches. He's shown some athletic ability. He, you know, Kelvin Harmon, right. I don't care what the stupid ref said. Kelvin Harmon made some freaking fantastic plays. Right. Fantastic plays. I think, Har- I think Harmon makes the roster. I, I think he, they drafted him, uh, I don't oh, know, yeah, what, sixth six round? Yeah, sixth round. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so that's two, right? If you go with Harmon. Uh, you know, making the roster. We haven't even mentioned Josh Doxson. You know, does Darvin Kidsey no, really. make the roster? Cam Sims. Cam Sims last year looked great. Hadn't done much this year, but he's got a ton of ability. Right. So I, I think this is the most interesting position group uh, on the team right now. And I think the next yeah. two. I think nobody really has locked down except for those three. So I think we're going to see a lot of stuff go on in the next two weeks. For this position group, you, you know what I don't need to see. I don't need to see Brian Quick at this point, uh, and I I don't dislike Brian Quick. There's nothing yeah. personal about it. There there's younger guys behind him who, you know, are part of the long term yeah. plan for this yeah. team. I mean, Brian Quick Possibly. was listed as a third stringer, but behind Cam yeah. Sims on the depth chart. But he's getting way more snaps than I feel like <laughs> I, I mean, need to see him the, at this the, point. <laughs> uh, we know what you we, we know what you are. You're like a 28 year old wide receiver. You've been around the league. Right. You know, it's good to go. Uh, I'll tell you this about Davis. Uh, he's only had the two catches, if you really think about it. Like, he hasn't had other, anything other than those two big catches, but his average yard per catch now is like 50 yards a catch because they've both been Don't deep Don't forget that Robert touchdown. Davis is a freak of nature. Robert Davis yeah. reminds me of yeah. Terrell Owens, a lesser – Sort of the poor man's Terrell Owens. He's got the size. He's got the speed. Um, he he looks lengthier than Terrell Owens. I, I mean, I'm not saying the man's a carbon copy. I'm just saying he kind of has yeah, that no. same sort of skill set. They both came from a small school. Uh, you know, um, I like Robert Davis a lot, and you can't underestimate what he overcame to even get back on the field. You know, yeah. devastating no, injury. Can't. I like Robert Davis a lot, and he's a draft pick. You know, remember he's a draft pick, and so he's going to have an automatic leg up over some of these undrafted free and, agents. And that's what I was going to say too. Absolutely. Like, I, I don't think as much as I like Cam Sims, I still got to feel like the way I, <laughs> excuse me, the way I give opinions is kind of balanced. And I, I personally don't think as much as he's done well in the preseason. I'm excuse me in training camp, like he still hasn't really produced. He's actually been on the the wrong end of penalties, I believe, too. Uh, and yeah. end game, which doesn't necessarily help his case, um, and that that just goes against him. Yeah. 
Uh, even though, you know, you, you see what he's done last year and you see what he's done in training camp, um, you got to, like, you're you're in a battle. You're in a big battle here. Um, you can, I, I believe, you're eligible for, uh, excuse me, for a practice squad, I, I want to say. But at the same time, for <clears throat> the final 53, um, you got to do a little bit more. And it goes to what Steve said. Like, you got to, you got to, you got to draft pick in Kelvin Harmon. You got to draft pick in. Um, Robert Davis, uh, you're, you, you have, you have a lot to work for. You have to keep working and it's your time is running out in terms of preseason. Um, you got to do a little bit more, man. I agree. I mean, and I think Cam was dramatically underused at Alabama, you know, and, and, uh, the Redskins did him a favor, you know, by doing what they did with him last preseason. But you're absolutely right, Jamal. I mean, you know, Robert Davis and Kelvin Harmon are not getting cut. Period. Dot. The end. They aren't yeah. getting cut. No. You know, they. You know, one of them may end up on the practice squad, but with what Calvin Harmon has shown, I mean, I have to think somebody would probably steal him. So, I mean, it, yeah, you're running out of roster spots. You know, the, the, somebody yeah. who the, who has talent is not going to be on this roster. A couple of them, and don't forget about Jihu Chesson. Jihu Chesson is a critical special teams guy. You know, I mean, and he came through last year, you know, when everybody was hurt. So, I mean, he's got talent, too. So it's a very interesting group. And I think the next two games are going to be very, very insightful in terms of what happens with this group. Yeah, going and forward. It, I mean, that that is the uh, interesting point about the wide receivers. Usually the team wants to have a wide receiver as that, like, kick returner or punt returner. The, the guys who they typically would put in there, like Quinn, I don't think they want to use them now or – yeah. Well, Quinn you know. isn't really that good of a returner. So, I mean, he doesn't have the experience in it. I, I mean, I, it's not no. it's not lost on me, like I said earlier, that uh, Sean Wilson is the guy who's getting the punt returns right now. Right. By the way, Steve, I, I looked at my book of, uh, you know, all the Redskins yeah. roster and stuff for when I was at camp. He wasn't even on the Yeah, he's team pretty yet. new, but he's, like, leaped oh. at, up to the yeah. top of the depth chart for punt Dude, returns Trey, uh, for some reason. Because – Literally, yeah, no one else is Trey's doing only it. Done prior to like tw- prior to 2018, he's only done like three, three or four returns in college. So, um, yeah, has- yeah, it's Stroman is the one that did a lot in college. And Stroman was terrible, was terrible I, at. I he was terrible. He was terrible. He, he yeah, because yeah. I ain't never seen that many fair calls a day in my life from a return man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, it was not We good. got roster updates. We got okay. McCoy and Geis' weird injury status stuff. Is there anything else you guys want to throw out there about Bengals game, uh, defense, special teams, anything um, else? Uh, uh, defense looked defense much looked better. Well, so let's, mind let's you that defense, little, the first little string little. defense actually played. That actually yes. matters. Right. <laughs> not helps. helps. I mean, they didn't play in the Browns game. So, so <laughs> this is their first action of the year. Yeah. Um, two great. things I'll say. Right. I'll be What's quick with it. I, I like how Ryan Finley played. Uh, I only have to shout him out because that was a guy I, I felt like people were disrespecting every time I brought his name up as an option for quarterback. So he is a guy that I root for. <laughs> He's not an NFC East rival, so I think I'm safe <laughs> when I root for when I root for Ryan You're Finley. Safe. You're but safe. Uh, secondly, I think special teams may be an issue <clears throat> moving forward. But um, it's kind of hard to tell given that yeah, the, some of these returns are not with the starters, and some of these returns are with guys or the um, coverage. Excuse me, coverage skills are with guys that may not be on this roster moving forward. So um, just don't know yet. But special teams may be something to, to monitor moving forward. Yeah, definitely. I think we all agree with that. That has been an S show. No one wants to monitor that going forward, but we all need to keep our eyes on it yet because it hasn't looked good. I think we're we're gonna miss Ben Cutweeka real quick. And Ben Cutweeka sucks. Ben Cutweeka sucked too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I like to point well, he, out. He, I'll give him credit. He got uh, he got our kickers right. Well, he did get our kickers right, so. and you know, Tress Ways has been awesome. Yeah. Derek, Dustin Hopkins had just the worst off day ever. You know, understanding that there were some bad snaps, but still, he yeah. just didn't. It didn't go well for him. He's warming up. He's still yeah. warming up. First of all, I just heard what Sean he said. He had one shank that it looked like he didn't even <laughs> kick it. He's warming well, up. Give him some time to grease the wheels. he's man. good about week one because if he ain't warming up by then, he needs to go. <laughs> And, and Jamal, I just went back, and while you were talking, went back and looked at my quarterback rankings from the draft. I had Finley ranked seventh, so I guess I was one of the guys that bashed him. I don't know if Sorry. I bashed him, but you know, just just a little, the slight disrespectfulness, if that's even a word from, from people on, who, no, I, who just turned down the idea of him 
being mm. a, a competent player for the Redskins in this offense is just oh I didn't think that uh, I didn't just, think that just yeah he's I was like, yeah why on? As a matter of fact man I was talking about him a lot on Twitter during the draft process like how Ron Finley was yeah I was like it's, yeah because I was a big crazy. Finley I, fan I too some of these, the people just rejecting the notion that he's any type of good because they see Kyler Murray and Dwayne Haskins I'm like come on man y'all could do better than that dig a little deeper. <laughs> No, yeah, no, he, he, you know, he's not. I don't think he'll ever be an elite guy, but he reminds me a lot of what like Kirk Cousins yeah, brought to does. the table. Like he could be another that kind of quarterback. There's only one Kirk one. Cousins in this year. Hopefully, he just God. don't ends up with a five and twenty six <laughs> record against winning teams. Sadly, in the NFL, there's like ten. I said, What's that, Jamal? He doesn't turn out to be like a, a five and twenty six uh, win loss quarterback against teams with winning records. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good point. We've seen that before. All right, Steve, hit us with some roster yep. updates. You okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we've had a bunch of roster updates, actually. Uh, just Sunday alone. You're hitting us on Monday. On Sunday, um, waved Miles Humphrey, uh, waved, waved oh, uh, no. Jawan Neal. They signed uh, defensive lineman Kerry Clark, signed linebacker Gary Johnson. Um, Gary Johnson is an interesting dude. Let's start with him. Um, he's undersized he's six foot weighs maybe 220 pounds with rocks in his pockets um he's from texas university of texas this guy ran a four four three forty so he's a burner but uh and, and he's known as kind of a vocal leader guy um for what i understand and we saw him play yeah linebacker? well he played linebacker in college at least <laughs> you know i don't know I mean, that sounds like a safety. I, I'm just telling you what he did at Texas. Uh, but he's sure, known sure, as like sure. a, a leader, a high energy, you know, one of those guys. His problem, of course, is that he, he just doesn't have the agility, you know, and he doesn't have the size. That's his problem. But he's an interesting prospect, um, and I think he's probably going to be one that, that fans are going to see that 4 4 40 time, and they're going to see him out on the field kind of being fiery. So this guy may be the next mm-hmm. guy that people are rooting for. <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of our linebackers are already dinged yeah. up, so we kind of need that, an and extra people body are going to see him, and that's all the more reason why you know people are going to kind of root for this he, guy. I think he may be the next one. I, I don't know if there were any real no. big updates, but I know at one point in the game, uh, yeah, Cole, got, Cole was well, out. Cole right? got hurt. Cole Hulk the game. Yeah. Um, in game, uh, yeah. Josh yeah. Harvey Clemens got hurt, right? So, like, we were down to, like, Josh one Harvey linebacker. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Sean Dion was hurt before yeah, the game. I was going to say. Um, and I think it was one more I want to say. Right. I can't remember, but I think definitely those three for sure. <clears throat> heard this. Heard the ILBs. What is going on? I need some water. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, just speaking on injuries, the last two years for the Redskins have been absolutely devastated by injuries. That is maybe one of the bigger factors into the team struggles is just we cannot stay healthy. The last two years in particular, I know it goes back further than that. My goodness, we get a lot of money wrapped up in injuries. Any no other about, updates? No, 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 no. That was that was um, that was the roster updates. You know, for now, you know, the the none of these guys are big salary cap guys, so. Um, I'm still kind of in the middle of redoing the cap in terms of I haven't calculated the rule of 51 and everything yet. But the bottom line is they have about the same amount of space, which is a little bit over $7 million left under the rule of 51, you know, if they wanted to go there. so. Got it. All right. Well, let's spend a little bit of time talking about these very frustrating, lingering injury problems. We've, we're hearing about it with Colt this week. We're hearing about it with Geis. Neither one of them seem totally ready to go for the start of the season. That's obviously going to factor into a lot of roster stuff with who starts at quarterback or who's backing who up. So let's start with it. You want to start with Colt first? Okay. Sounds like it's a leg thing. Yeah, I think that's the – the quarterback is always going to be the biggest topic, right, for this season is who's going to play. Well, can I week. confirm something from and, Jamal and Alex? You were there. This man was practicing fully in training camp, correct? Yes. Okay. Correct. What Absolutely. on earth has happened to this guy? He went from practicing, because don't forget when he went out, remember at the end of the season, toward in the middle of the season, Jay Gruden was talking about having him come back and play in the playoffs, yeah. you know, if the Redskins had made right. the playoffs. And, and, and we saw him practice. You and Al, you, Alex and Jamal personally saw him practice fully. In training camp, and now yeah, because I remember distinctly seeing a couple okay. of dead ducks. And now we've gone to that arm, from so. he's not ready and can't play, and God knows when. So, you know what has happened to this man? There was a timeline. I I, I just want to point out there that I remember, um, like a day, or maybe two days after I ended my time in training camp, um, 
Cole McCoy did get dinged up on the field, on the practice field. Um, and it was a lower, it was a lower body injury. I don't remember. I can't, I don't want to say it's that same leg because I don't remember. Um, but it was reported that he, he got a lower leg injury, um, or lower, excuse me, lower body. Um, and yeah. that may contribute to the timeline. Like he could have been ready for the field. Who knows? I don't know, but I'm just putting that out there that that's a possibility. But with that, even, even with that being said, um, doesn't make sense. The way he was playing on the field during practices, I, I don't. Like, it was so random. And that's one of the things that's just getting annoying to me with Jay Gruden. Um, it's a small thing, but it's just growing. Like, if you have these type of things, like, why are you holding it out? Why, why are you not being as transparent as you could be that can nullify the 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 um, the questions that the fans have and the media have about what's going on with these players? Like, we didn't even know Cole Holcomb wasn't playing until the day of the game. And the same thing with Terry McLaurin, too. Like, you don't know what's going on, and then you find out he got a bruised tailbone. He could have played, but you sat him out. That don't even make sense. Like, I don't understand. Like these, right. they're not no pressure. Like, play these guys. I don't get it. I, I'm telling you, I, I think Jay Gruden is sandbagging on Terry McLaurin. I, mean, I really do. And that's just, but um, I, I only name. I'm, I'm sorry to get on this side rant, but it's just the, it's just the fact that I only <laughs> named him. But it's the same thing with Cole Holcomb. Like he said, these guys could have. He's saying certain guys could have played, but he held them out. It don't make, it don't make much sense. Um, in the sense that you have to get these guys ready to play. Um, and you're talking about sitting a guy out for a bruised tailbone. Um, now, I, from what I understand, I saw somebody who had a similar injury say that it's extremely painful. But if the guy said he could have played, then it's probably not to the degree in which somebody else said it was extremely painful. Probably wasn't that painful for him if he could have played. So um, I just think that transparency is a problem. And it, it points to the, the highlight of Darius Geis not being clear. Nobody knew he wasn't cleared to play. Um, and then the same thing with Cole McCoy saying he's not ready yet. And it's almost been – it's pushing, what, eight months, I think, since he hurt his leg. So, um, it's, it's a, it, I think these things are at uh, least problems in my, in my eyes. More than eight, more than eight months. Well, I, I think that the, you're, I, you're seeing actually two different problems with the, what you're talking about. The, the Jay being secretive about uh, some of these injuries, I mean, part of that is that old coaches just don't want to tell anyone anything because they don't want to have other teams have – you know anything to help them prepare sure so i understand that there there is a little bit of that i know it's preseason it shouldn't really right. matter but you know coaches get in that mindset they're not going to get out of it and uh it took jay a while to get there i don't think it's going to be easy for him to stop acting like well, every other number coach one in that regard in answer to jamal's question jay addressed the leg injury in his Sunday presser, and they asked him if it was the current leg, if the current leg injury is the same leg as last season. Answer: Yes. And so that, so whatever happened to him was the same, was the same one. And and, well, and let's remember, they had to do what three surgeries on him? Yeah, some of that's now, infections and this, other things, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A- and um, but there's a problem here. There's a consistent problem of. Guys get leg injuries here, and they have to have like four hundred surgeries. Well, to help. you know, that's, I don't know I if you can really blame the Redskins for yeah, it. That's a surgery. Yeah, exactly. Thing. It is, and it's infections. I don't know if you can blame the Redskins for you know it, 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 surgery locations getting infected. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how you blame the Redskins for well, that. Well, but it it just it happened to three it's players just, last it's year. It's just bad luck. Weird. Maybe we need to find a better hospital for this team. <laughs> Maybe James Andrews isn't the man to manage this process. You know, I don't know. No. Hey, can he wash them with loving <laughs> alcohol, not whiskey or whatever he's using? <laughs> um, and the other question, Jay, Jay is clearly very tired of talking about Colt McCoy because most of his answers are one-word answers. You know, but they asked him right. on Colt McCoy being hit in training camp. The answer, nothing happened to aggravate it, just a little gimpy going in. Um so he's sort of implying, he's not implying, he's saying there that, you know, he didn't get hit, you know, to to that re him. Yeah. So take it for what you will. I mean, the bottom line is Jay doesn't have to say anything, so he's not going to say anything. That's really kind of the bottom line to all this. Yeah. You know, there's no injury report right now, so he's going to go, screw you, I'm not telling you anything. That's what's going that on. That may be the case. Yeah. And, and I think he is also probably petrified of another year. Hey, like he's got to be gun years, shy by probably, now. It's like, you know, yeah. he's like the dog that really gets afraid of fireworks. You know, when when you hear the fireworks sure. go off too many times and then the dog goes and hides under the bed, that's Jay Green with injuries. Okay, remember that. Remember my right. analogy, people. You know, when the next like time that. your dog Good dives word. under the couch during 4th of July, that is Jay Gruden. Remember that. 
Yeah, that works. I like that. Yeah. Analogy. Somebody copyright that. Remember how Patrick Ramsey had PTSD or whatever from all the sacks he took playing for Spurrier? <laughs> that, that's I think Jay Gus Rod had PTSD from ramming a <laughs> brick wall in 1994. Yeah. That was classic. Yeah. Um, all right, anything else on injuries, or should we do a little mini? I know Steve um, wants to do a little mini Falcons preview. Yeah, well, injury-wise, let's see. Um, he, I think he mentioned Fabian Moreau in here. Yeah, he, all he uh, said about Fabian Moreau is he's got an ankle sprain. Still don't know what that means. He didn't elaborate, but that's all he said. I mean, it sounds like he has a sprain. Well, ankle. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, but is it a high? Alex. Is it a high <laughs> ankle sprain? It is it that. is it minor? Is it major? You know, it didn't say any of that. Oh, sure. Yeah. They yeah. asked him that. Is it a high ankle, low ankle sprain? And he didn't answer the question. So. And he goes, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, his yeah. answer to that was was the question was it, it, the question is on if Moreau's injury is a high or low ankle sprain. His answer is medium. That's what he said. Medium. medium. I don't. I don't know. It's down there somewhere. <laughs> You're, you're he said, ankle. medium, I don't know. It's down there somewhere in the ankle. Oh, I like that answer. I love that answer. That's classic. That's a stop asking me stupid questions I'm not going to answer type of answer. Yeah. I'm not doctor. <laughs> no, it's, I, no it's, I know the answer, but I'm not going to tell you, so stop asking. That's what it means. That too, yes. All right, very good. Injury, then that is injuries. So um, yeah. this Thursday we've got uh, the game at Atlanta. Anything you guys are looking right. forward to seeing in particular or you're expecting to see, third preseason game, generally pretty important, what's, what's on your mind? Um, please look like an NFL team, like a, like a regular season NFL team for two quarters. I don't think Jay's going to play him. In the, it used to be years ago that they would play three quarters of starters. Jay yep. Gruden just didn't. Jay Gruden right. didn't do that. He just not. No, no, he'll may, do it maybe. Half. <laughs> I, I think that's the yeah. furthest you can get. Um, him to I do. just please look like a real NFL team. Do not let the Falcons run all up and down. Matt Ryan and Julio Jones has run all up and down all over you. You know, that's all I ask. And no injuries. I, those two I, things, I'll be happy. I don't care what the final yeah. score is. Uh, I will. I will be very curious to see. Uh, who the starting lineup is in the first quarter for the offense? Like, who's who's the number one running back? The number one, one running back is Adrian Peterson. I don't think we've really number seen one that running back is Adrian you know? Peterson. There's no doubt. The yeah, well, I, I mean that one's. I don't think guys yeah, is going to play. Yeah, I don't think he's back. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll play this game. At all. <coughs> Excuse me, clearly. No. 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 Uh, for me, I guess I, I'll, I'll just be I'll just be looking at it it's kind of to an extent of. Of what Alex was saying, I just want to see um, what the lineups are going to look like. Now, I don't want um, just a personal preference. I'm not going to say like this is right or wrong. Just a personal preference. I don't want these guys to be pity patting with the lineups. Um, if you're going to come out there and and you want to see who your projected starters are going to be uh, week one, make sure that these guys get enough work together um, and have enough time where they're mm-hmm. on the field for like two quarters, two and a half quarters, who knows, two or one-fourth of a quarter, like a a, dry, a possession coming out of the um, halftime. Like make sure that these guys get enough work, plenty of work together where they can feel comfortable enough and, and the coaches feel comfortable enough with what these guys can work for. And that's on both sides of the football. Um, so Ryan Kerrigan needs to be playing. Josh Norman needs to be playing. He played last week, but he needs to be playing. Landon Collins, Monte Nicholson, whoever they want on the offensive line. Um, McLaurin needs to be up there in the starting lineup. Trey Quinn, if he's healthy, like if these guys are healthy, we're, we're, we won't know until down the road, you know. And Jay Gruden doesn't, he's being really petty with his, his injury sure. report. But <laughs> all these guys need to be playing and making sure that they get the work um, and how the coaches plan to use them a little bit in the regular season. So um, that's all I, that's all I want to expect. That's all I want to see. Yeah, I do not. I do not agree with how Jay Gruden handles the preseason. Sort of generally, I think he's way too soft on these guys. I think he plays scared in the off season, in the preseason game. It's one thing to not open up your offense. So I totally understand that. It's a whole another thing to be a. Af- yeah, most people. I hope keep it's a totally other I mean, thing to be good. afraid to play these people because. And I realize you lost. You know, Darius Geis. We've lost guys for the season. You know, we ruined. Who was the safety guy's career ruined in the pre in the. <laughs> In the uh, preseason a few years ago, uh, and um, the, the, I don't remember. <coughs> no, it wasn't a safety. It was um, it was a tight end who just retired. <laughs> anyway, point is, we've seen really awful things happen in the preseason. I get that, but I just don't think you can play NFL football to be scared. 
I, I, these guys, Jamal's exactly right. These guys need the work. They need, especially the offensive line. They need the time. This is a somewhat sure. new offensive line. Three out of five, two out of five positions. They need to be on the field. These receivers need time with the quarterback, whether it's Haskins, whether it's Case Keenan, whether it's Jalen McClendon, for God's sakes. <laughs> these receivers. Yeah, they need to yes. get the rhythm down. Um, and so I think Jay needs to play these guys uh, through. I, I would play him through three quarters. I know he won't, but he should. <laughs> uh, I, and I agree. And I think, you know, there, there's that old saying, you know, you have to get hit. A few times before the regular season, so that you kind of listen. I've are been ready there at a lower level, at a, my little yeah. high school level. You have to kind of get used to getting hit again. You know, you have to get some game yeah. time st- stuff in before you're kind of used to it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Anything else you guys want to throw out there before we close? Sean, out did you the give week? your opinion, man? Uh, my only other thought on preseason. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really add much beyond what you guys have said. I mean. I kind of agree. Jay's not exactly a gunslinger in the preseason. We're probably not going to see too much flashy stuff. I hope to see the starters out there for at least a half. would be great. And, yeah, get the guys that you've held out of the game for whatever reason. Get them on the field and playing. Let's see what this team can do. Yeah. We did do a really dumb poll. Oh, well, then let's hear Oh, I did do a dumb poll. That's right. No, I, I I know what it was. Uh, so, so I uh, I did my in the middle of the preseason game poll like I like to do, <laughs> yeah. and my poll was what should the NFL do about especially bad referees, and my uh, poll question or the four answers were fine them, fire them, something involving bees. Um. And other. I'm going to guess the, the the public just went straight silly with this one and, and went for the bees. That's kind of where my inclination's at. But no, yeah, find them, find them. You're costing or, or us if money. You have you're another to give money. me. Cause find the refs. I was trying to be fun ball. with a couple with my third answer, obviously. Or so uh, the winning answer was actually fire them at 42 percent. About the bees, Come and on, uh, bees, bees only came in with 24 percent. Sean, only 24 percent wanting bees. <laughs> See the connections. This is and, why and people here's listen the to thing. the thing. Think about it. The bees are stripes. Make. We're like stripes, about just like referees. Beautiful. I know we have a lot of a lot of listeners <laughs> who like talking about bees. So, right. right. There you go. All right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, we will close out there. Let you yes. all get back to your lives. Hope you enjoyed the show. As I said at the top, we are part of Big Heads Media. So show us some love over there at BigHeadsMedia.com and at TheHogsDie.com and on Twitter because there's. No limit to the love you can show us. And we'll see you all next week right here on the Hawks Die. Take care. Cut. 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 Cut.